All right, let's look at some problems um, where we are using the first law. We're keeping track conservation of energy uh, for a system to, you know, solve for uh, whatever it's asking. So, number seven, at winter conditions, a house is projected to lose heat at a rate of 60,000 BTUs per hour. The internal heat gain from people, lights, appliances is estimated to be 6,000 BTUs per hour. If this house is to be heated by electric resistance heaters, determine the required rated power in these heaters in kilowatts to maintain the house at a constant temperature. To maintain the house at a constant temperature. Okay. Uh, all right. So maybe first of all, E in minus E out equals delta E. That's my conservation of energy. What is it telling us in here? At winter conditions, a house is projected to lose heat at a rate of 60,000 BTUs. So my house is my system. And if it is losing heat, right, I would say that is a Q out, right? That's a Q loss of 60,000. Uh, but it, it, it gains heat from the people, lights, and appliances, etc. Uh, so I would say that is a heat gain a Q in. The house is to be heated by electric resistance heaters. So, so that's some sort of work that I'm going to put into my house, W in. And we want to determine the power of those heaters so that we don't know that W in. That's what we're looking for. To maintain the house at a constant temperature. Now, if it's at a constant temperature, then wouldn't you say that the final and the initial, you know, kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy is the main one, but everything on the right-hand side of this is going to be zero if we're, if we're maintaining, right? There's no change in energy. We've got some energy leaving, we've got some energy we're putting in, but if we're maintaining everything, we want everything to be equal to zero. Okay, so I've got a... Q out of 60,000, so negative 60,000 BTUs per hour. Okay, but I'm adding 6,000 BTUs per hour. I'm also going to add the, the work by this electric resistance heaters equals zero. So, there, so it really wasn't that complicated. Right? So the work by these heaters is going to be, so this is a dot, uh, just because of the units here, BTU per hour or per time. The power uh, of the heaters, 54,000 BTUs per hour, uh, except these are, you know, maybe from the store, they give these to us in kilowatts. So I need to convert BTUs per hour to kilowatts. So let's go to, it's just a unit conversion. Just a unit conversion. BTU per hour to kilowatts. Oh, well, it was right there. Whoops. Right there. Uh, directly one kilowatt, 34, 12.14 BTUs per hour. So convert BTU per hour. Let's see, one kilowatt was 34, 12.14 BTUs per hour. Yeah, so there we go. Left with kilowatts of 15.8 kilowatts. So that's my answer. Then I can take that and decide, okay, what, what type of heater? I need something that give, can give me at least 15.8 kilowatts, or at least that's the uh, power in those heaters to maintain the house at a constant temperature. Okay, number eight, a water pump increases water pressure from 15 PSI A to 70 PSI A. Determine the power input required in horsepower to pump this volume, volumetric flow rate, right, of 0.8 feet cubed per second. That's a V dot, that's volume per second of water. Okay, uh, so what type of energy are we talking about? Uh, we I need to know the power input required to the pump. So what work in do we need to give to the pump? Now, on the left-hand side, it doesn't say anything about heat transfer. You know, um, what, it's, what it's 
what I'm really saying is this pressure change. What, where's the pressure change in this conservation of energy equation? Uh, that's in the flow work. Flow work. I've got a couple equations for flow work, but uh, one, it would be the delta P times the volumetric flow rate. That's pretty much exactly what the equation was giving to me, right? Flow work is P times V, but this P is really a delta P, a change in pressure. So this is going to be a 70 minus 15. 70 minus 15. Let me do it right here because I think my units aren't going to work out. I've got 55 is the 70 minus 15. That's the change in pressure. PSIA, pounds per square inch, all right, times the volumetric flow rate of 0.8 feet cubed per second, mm. 0.8 feet cubed per second, okay, those units don't work out, I want units of horsepower, I want units of horsepower, I've got pound, this is pound force, I've got pound force, feet, inches, seconds, and I want horsepower, Let, let's see if I can get any help from my um, unit conversion, horsepower, and yeah, right here, you know, power and energy are kind of some, some, these are some big areas where I might get some good unit conversions. I want horsepower, and I've got pound force, okay, how about, how about we try this one, right, because I want horsepower, and I've got a, I've got some of these. I know I saw pound force, I know I saw feet, I know I saw seconds. Uh, so one horsepower is 550. All right, so I want horsepower, so I want to keep it in the numerator. I want to get rid of some of these pound force feet per second. Okay, pound force force. Now one of these feet would change this to squared. This is in the denominator. This is in the denominator in the denominator. So those would cancel out. Uh, and then the only other problem I've got is now I'm, I've got feet squared on top, inches squared on the bottom. I can get, I can take care of that. Feet squared, inches squared. So I know that, uh, 12 inches or in one foot, but I need to square those. Here we go. Let me say 144 inches squared in one foot squared. All right, and then we've got everything cancels except for horsepower. So 55 times 0.8 divided by 550 times 144. I would get the power needed for the flow work. The flow work is changing the pressure, is pumping, increasing the pressure in a fluid in my system. If, you, if there's an increase in pressure in your system, that's a, that's the flow work. All right, the work would be 11.5 horsepower. 11.5 horsepower. Okay. So we've got another one. Let's consider a room that's initially at the outdoor temperature of 20 degrees. The room contains a 40-watt um, light bulb, 110-watt TV set, 300-watt refrigerator, 1,200-watt iron. So it's just kind of telling us all the energies of these. Assuming no heat transfer through the walls, determine the rate of the increase of the energy content of the room when all of these electronic devices are on. Okay, uh, so this is, this is very uh, elementary, right? It, it's just telling us all of these energies, right? So these are increasing by 40 watts, 110 watts, 300 watts, 1200 watts. And it wants the rate of the increase of energy, right? It wants the delta E. It wants the delta E. Delta E, and, and, and that's it. That's it. These are actually dots, uh, watts instead of 
kilojoules. So it's telling us the power of the light bulb, the power of the TV, power of all of these devices. And they would be increasing the energy in our um, room. And if, I mean, it already said there's no heat transfer through the wall, but the room is at the same temperature as outside. That's telling us there's no Q. It's not losing heat. It's not gaining heat due to the uh, heat transfer in the walls, but it also told us there's no heat transfer through the walls. Uh, so there we go. The, this was very simple. The change in energy, the rate, rate is power. Change in the rate, the increase in energy, 1650 watts. So, and that's just a few examples. You'll see lots of different types of problems and things. Keep track of the left hand side heat transfer, work, or energy crossing boundaries. The right hand side is change in kinetic energy, change in potential energy, change in internal energy or flow work, or just the right hand side is just maybe what it's asking for. As, as in this last case, it was asking for the delta E. It was asking for the delta E. Here, the right-hand side was flow work. Here, the right-hand side was zero. Sometimes it's zero if there's no change in energy. If, if things are constant, things are held at the same uh, properties that it began at. All right?